a lot of loan yeah, and homesickness when you travel to another country specifically when i was 17 years old stepping out of my country for the first time alone mm. um but one tip that i personally followed and i would advise any international student to follow is that uh try to get out of your comfort zone so i made sure that i was hanging out with a lot of international students and not staying in my comfort zone of the indian association so it was easier for me to look at different cultures be more open from the day one so it was a very good group of friends i ended up making these are lifelong friends whether we were all foreigners in a foreign land so it was not their homeland it was not my homeland so there was a natural connection between all the friends of mine and i mean just to have this feeling of being able to call them friends is so surreal once you land in italy but i think that was very natural yeah so once i landed in uh, turin the international office was very helpful in providing us a list of uh, accommodation facilities for me i was also already connected with the indian students association so they guided me to a organization called alojami where i met miss tekla she picked me up in her car and took me to some of the houses and the first house i saw i fell in love with it it was a huge 4 bhk and it was all empty it was recently rented so that was my first accommodation but otherwise international students international office suggested a number of uh, organizations and websites such as chair college uh, alojo or uh, kahoot etc so there are enough resources if you are international student you don't need to worry about finding an accommodation so uh, when i was looking for internships i was told to not look for internships because it was very difficult for international students but i wanted to try my luck so i started looking for internships i applied to two companies and uh, i interviewed for them that was the first suit i bought to wear to the internship interview and uh, luckily i got through the first interview that i went through so it was a smoother process for me but if i have to suggest you then definitely look at the resources that the university provides there was there are always different kinds of internships Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Uni Italia India's free departure day 2023. I'm Jashan Sippi. I'm the manager of events and communications at Uni Italia India offices and we are very happy to have you here today. Please note that we will be addressing your questions as you put them in the chat. Ah yani papa tumhare don seva please put yourself on mute so that you are not disturbing the speakers today thank you um we have organized these pre departures days because we want to provide reliable information from reliable sources for all of you um for those of you who are indian students who want to pursue their higher studies in italy we receive hundreds of queries every day on social media about how to prepare um for your departure to italy and what to do after you arrive in italy so today we're going to talk about various topics um as follows we're going to talk about how to apply for your resident permit after you arrive in italy we're going to address how you can open your own italian bank account where you can buy a sim card when you land in italy we're going to talk about health insurance for students in italy how to find reliable accommodation and some tips for using public transport as well please patiently wait as all the topics are addressed because each and every one of these topics is going to be relevant um to you so don't zone out uh, at some point in the middle right and with that we're going to open up for q and a at the end of the session so we invited kiara fernandes um you're going to see 
a little bit more and learn a little bit more about her shortly. So Chiara has studied a master degree in art history at the Tor Vergata University of Rome. She's worked at the Unitalia Mumbai office since 2019. And Chiara continues to handle inquiries from international students at the Unitalia headquarters in Rome. Welcome, Chiara. And along with Chiara, we have Ms. Federica Maria Giove, our Director of India Offices at Uni Italia, who is going to be moderating the session um, with Chiara today. So over to you, Federica. Thank you, Jashan. Thanks uh, um, to Chiara for being here today and for delivering this uh, precious information to the students that are attending this session. I would also like to say thank you to Raul, who's not here today, but who shared the his testimonial video with us, uh, which you saw at the opening of this webinar. Um, I'm also very, very happy to see uh, the amount of students that have uh, decided to attend this event, which is a clear evidence of how important these topics are and how important it is to find and to understand how things uh, uh, will be for you once you arrive in Italy. Uh, as a starting point, the first question that I have uh, for Chiara um, concerns the, let's say, uh, things to do before leaving uh, uh, India, before leaving the country. Is there any um, suggestion, Chiara, you would like to give to the students before their departure? Yes, there are a lot of things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, but the main thing that I found that was really important is to have scans of all your documents, okay, with you, that is your passport with all the pages. So if you have other stamps on your passport, please take a scan and keep it, okay, all your academic certificates, the front and the back, because we've got the apostille on it, we've got the other stamps on it, so you require the back as well, okay, a copy of your birth certificate, okay, you may not need it, but then you have events and places for your internships and all that you might need it eventually okay and any other certificate that you deem important okay something pertaining to your cv some exam that you've given keep the scans with you because it's always it's always you you know you may not know when you require it um, then take copies of your documents um, you can definitely come here and get that done okay but when you arrive here uh, there is a possibility that you need to search for, you know, the coffee shop and you don't have time and you start panicking because you might have an, an appointment. So always keep copies with you. I've mentioned at least five copies because I have looked at the amount of things that we need the, the copies for. Okay, your DOV, if you have the DOV or if you have your Chimia, um, your enrollment certificate, keep at least five copies of that and your health insurance. Um, one thing I found important is to activate roaming on your Indian SIM card because you might have some kind of bank account connected to it. You might need an OTP. Okay, so always keep that um, activated before you leave. Uh, yes, and also think about whether you require some sort of medication, whether you require take one sweater at least because okay, it could be a little chilly in September when you arrive uh, keep a jacket. You can always get it here afterwards, but just be a little prepared when you reach here. Yeah. Thank you. And don't Chiara. be scared. Okay. Don't be scared. Okay. Be, you're going to be really excited because you're coming to a new place. <laughs> Thank you, Chiara. Um, and what about once arriving in the country? I believe that okay. uh, students will be landing, uh, uh, will be arriving in the city where the university they have chosen is located in, what are the first steps uh, to do, according to you? Okay. So the first step would be just to buy a SIM card, okay? Um, there is Wi-Fi everywhere, but as soon as you arrive at the airport, you will be able to buy a SIM card. So remember those copies that I spoke about, you will require your passport copy at that point of time, which you need to give them, okay? That's all you require for a SIM card. Okay, the passport copy. Okay, then you have different um, companies that offer uh, SIM cards. So that could be either the Vodafone. Okay, that's something that we all know about. Then Italy has something called Iliad. Tim, there's Wintry. Okay, um, offers go from 7 euros to 10 euros a month. Okay, you can get something cheaper also for 4 euros. If you don't want to buy one at the airport, it's not a problem. 
there. You can buy one at your local mall. There'll be a shop near where you live. So don't worry. Okay, but buy a SIM card as soon as you reach. Um, Permit me to Yes. Okay, so, so this is an this is um, an important question that everybody asks. Okay, this is your residence permit. You have eight days. Okay, after you arrive in the country, arrive in the city that you're going to be residing it. Okay, to submit your permit, so this is Jordan. Um, remember, you can only submit this in the city that you are residing it. I'm in, residing in. I'm saying this again. Okay, so that's where your university is based. Okay, if you arrive in another place and you're staying for a few days, um, try not to do that. Okay, go directly to the city uh, of your university where you have accommodation and you apply for your residence permit there. Um, now, the kit, the residence kit, okay, this would be available with either the international office or you can get it at any post office. Okay, this residence permit kit is the same for students, for work permits, for everything. Okay, the kit remains the same. Okay, it's a yellow kit. Um, let me see. Yeah, he's put it here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay, uh, you can get this, as I said, as a, at the post office. It, it, it is free at the point of collection. So when you take the kit from the post office, you do not need to pay any amount of money. Okay, so this is the first thing that you can do when you reach, locate your nearest post office or go to the international office. Okay, they will either provide you with one or they let you know where you can go get one. But remember, any post office has it. Um, now, while submitting the kit. So once you get the kit, okay, there are a couple of forms in it. Okay, fill it very carefully. Try filling it with a pencil first, okay, before you finalize it with ink. Okay, documents to be submitted at that point of time. Okay, so your passport copy or accept acceptance copy or enrollment copy. Okay, and your health insurance. So if you have not completed your enrollment, okay, by the time you finish the permesso, uh, by the time you're going to submit the permesso, don't worry. Okay, just put in your acceptance copy. Um, yes. Now, when where do you submit these? You need to submit this at the post office again. Okay, the same post office that you got it from. Okay, you go there, you submit the permesso di soggiorno. They'll check everything for you, so don't worry. Okay, um, and you need to pay 130. So 100 is for the residence permit, and 30 is the the tariff for the post office. Okay, you will then receive a slip. Okay, that slip is your temporary residence permit. Okay, till you receive your final one. So keep that safe take a scan of it as soon as you receive it okay so in case you lose it you always have a copy um and you will also receive an appointment letter okay appointment to go to the questura now what is the questura the questura is the police station where you go to do your fingerprints okay so you go there at the particular date and time that they give you okay they'll give you the address and everything so you don't need to worry okay Keep a reminder for the appointment because sometimes it happens a month to three months later and arrive at the Questura at least an hour in advance. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chiara. I would like to remind students that if they, if they have any questions related to the topics discussed, they can absolutely um, write them in the chat box. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bet all of you have already seen that you'll have your Codice Fiscale on your pre-enrollment form, the summary that you received from University. However, you need an official one. Okay, so when you come to Italy, okay, the again the international office will definitely let you know about which is with where you need to go. But the office that provides this is called the Agencia Entrata. Okay, again, it is in the city that you reside in. Okay, so you need to go to an office in the city that you reside in. Okay, again, you need your passport copy. That's about it. Okay, it's a free thing. You don't need to be paying anybody for it. And um, either the international office takes an appointment for you or you could take an appointment online on their website. Everything is very clear. Okay, you have the, uh, the different offices also. So you could lo locate the one which is closest to your accommodation as well. Okay, and go and get it from there. 
Um, one thing that I mentioned here is housing contract, if available, if at the point in time you do not still have your contract in hand, don't worry, go get the Kodi Chifiskale done. Okay, this is your tax code. Tara, we have two questions uh, related hmm. to the slide. So, Abai is asking, do we need to submit an accommodation contract for a permit? For your permit, not at the time when you're uh, when you're going to submit it first, okay? Again, it also depends from region to region. Certain regions require the permit, like Veneto requires a housing contract, uh, but that's only at your appointment, okay? So when the date that they give you, that is the time that you would require your contract by, okay? It's normally the end of December is, if you have a scholarship, then you are, will also need to submit a contract at that point of time. But again, every region is different, so you would need to check your rules for that place. Thank you. And also, Aishwarya is asking, who will give the appointment for police station for finger scans, fingerprints? Yes, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I said. The questura, you'll get it from the post office. So when you submit your form, the, the residence permit kit, they will give you an appointment letter with your receipt. Okay, the appointment letter gives you the time and date where you go to the questura to get your fingerprints done. Okay. One of the students is asking, can fiscal code issued by Agencia Entrada at Milan be valid at a university located in some other region? Uh, your fiscal code doesn't change. Uh, it's the same throughout Italy. So it depends on your name, your where you've been born and your birth date. So that is definitely not going to change. So yes, okay. it's valid everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I am asked fiscal for fiscal code before I arrive in Italy. How do I get it? Um, you would the official document we will need to go to Italy and get. Okay, mm -hmm. otherwise the one that is given on your pre-enrollment summary works everywhere. May so I you ask, don't need to worry about. May I ask who asked you, Ashwarya, to uh, provide fiscal code before arriving in Italy? Okay. Then, um, university did not provide me with the fiscal code. They sent me the enrollment summary without it. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that you all, some of you all might have it already on your pre-enrollment. If you don't, when you get to Italy, go to the agency and Trata and they will give it. Please be very careful that you mention your right name. If you have a middle name, put the middle name and exactly ask for your passport. Okay, because then you could create multiple fiscal codes. Middle name part is very, very important for, especially for Indian students who often don't have it and, uh, oh, sorry, have it. So please uh, write the uh, name exactly as it is while applying for your Codice Fiscale. Um, okay, so, and I would also like to add that often universities uh, uh, offer assistance in obtaining the um, fiscal code upon arrival in the uh, city. Okay, so free to visit their welcome office once you are there. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, now opening a bank account and now as Federica just mentioned when you visit your welcome office in the international office uh, these are things that they will already tell you about they will give you some information about so normally a university has a bank already affiliated to them so it will be the, the bank which is nearest to the university okay and you just require your passport and the enrollment copy to open a bank account in such uh, at such places where the university has a tie with the bank okay so you can do that when you arrive okay and if you do not wish to use that particular bank if you have done your research and you have a bank in mind okay there are other banks but for those you would require your residence permit okay you would need that uh, to open a bank account um, and or even at the post office, okay, you can open a bank account. Now, at the post office, there are two particular bank accounts that you can open. One is a current account and one, in, one is a savings account. Um, both of them provide you with an ATM card that you could withdraw money from, okay? The only catch with the savings account is that you don't require a residence permit, but to put money into the account, you can only put through cash, 
Okay, so I would suggest not because you, I mean, where do you get all that cash from, right? So wait, you could also use other apps. Okay, that is one thing that I did when I first arrived here. I used an app. I used Revolut. I used Wise, uh, and it worked beautifully. Okay, you can get money in. You can send money internationally. They uh, Revolut also has Indian rupee right now, so it's it works really well. And they provide you with an ATM card. You can use your phone directly at the machines for wireless um, payments, and it it. It's fine. This this account also, if you have a scholarship, also they the scholarship also gets credited to it, so you don't need to worry. Uh, yes, bank accounts. Then, um, uh, yeah, I have a small question. If if no, I please. may interrupt, no. What please, is the name of this app again? Uh, excuse what me. Is, please what? Write, excuse me. Please write the questions in the chat box. The name of the app is written on the screen. It's Revolut, and there's Wise. Okay, and yes, please refrain from talking in the middle. If you could just write it in the chat box, we'll we'll respond to you. Um, okay. Okay. Then travel pass. Um, when you first, okay, I've I've put that actually at the end. Always travel with a ticket, please. Always travel with a ticket. Okay. Um. It's important because if you get caught without a ticket, you will be paying a five a fifty euro fine at that particular time. And if you do not have the cash, then it gets onto your passport. So please, please always travel with a ticket. Um, where do you get your ticket? You can give you get your ticket from the ticket vending machine. So when you arrive, you may need to buy a ticket. They all accept cards, so you don't need to worry about having cash with you um, then you also get your student travel pass okay this could be provided directly from your international or your welcome office okay or you could go to the main ticket counter that's the main terminus and request for your student id pass it is a pass with will have your name on it it will have a qr code on it okay, it could also have your picture okay you may need to provide documents such as your enrollment copy or your passport as well as easy, we'll get to easy at a little, a, a little ahead. And um, then there are also apps where you can buy a ticket. Um, I have mentioned two here for Rome, there's Ticket Appy, and then there's AVM Venice, if you're in Venice. Uh, regional trains can be booked via Trenitalia. It works perfectly fine, okay? It's online and you can book whatever ticket you need. And again, always travel with a ticket. Okay, please, it's very important. <laughs> Next. Uh, I would okay, also add that yeah, in addition to Trenitalia, there is also Italo. I don't know if you have mentioned it, but we have... No, I haven't. So we have both Trenitalia and Italo for train. Um, so you can check both on both the websites. Okay, and uh, uh, of course, see which uh, rate is better. Yeah. I have... Uh, I wrote both the apps on the chat box. Mm -hmm. okay. Then uh, canteens, okay, so you will have a canteen in your university. If you're in a different department, every department has their own canteen. Um, then you have the regional DSU canteens, um, which are in different places across the city or could be just next to your university. Uh, what are the regional DSU canteens? So these are the ones which are, which come with the scholarship, okay? If you applied for a regional scholarship or, or even for any student, okay, that they offer discounted rates and um, they're very affordable, okay? So if you, you don't really need to learn to cook, <laughs> to be very honest. Uh, you get your lunch, you get your dinner and um, it's, uh, it's cheap, okay? For like a three, three meal, three, what is it called? Three plate meal, I couldn't remember the name of the no, word plate. Okay, um, it's very affordable. Um, the food is good. They also have vegetarian options, okay? Vegan options and even gluten-free options if that is something that you need because um, there are a lot of vegetarians in Italy. Um, 
that's one question that I think a lot of Indian parents worry about. Ah, is my child going to get vegetarian food? And yes, okay, it's available at the canteens. I'll move ahead. Okay. Uh, Now the health insurance. We have a lot of questions in the meantime. Um, okay. I'll go through the one related to the uh, bank account. Um, okay. So is opening bank accounts free in, in free in Italy, like in India? To open a bank account, yes, it is free. Um, they also have um offers for below 30 years of age. So their youth accounts, student accounts, the university account is free. So you don't need to worry about that. So the bank which is affiliated with the university. Um yeah. Okay. Is it compulsory to open a bank account if one is going to Italy for an undergraduate course? E yes, <laughs> because, um, I mean, you need money, you need to spend, right? So you would need to um, have money with you. So the safest way, way is to have your card, your bank What account, your resident. Using the Indian card, they will end up paying very high commissions. You will be well. paying, yes. So, I mean, what I do is I see when the rate is low and then I go and I change all my money and send it to my bank account. Because, I mean, that's how you're living in, living in a globalized world. Um, uh, you, you just answered okay. my question. If I can uh, say something. No, no, no. Okay, so we will have to, please, everyone, we have more than 100 participants here. So if everyone will start interrupting with questions it will right. be it will get here. yeah um, just answer yes we will answer we will give attention to all of the questions okay so um regarding the um uh, bank account uh, um how what amount we should carry while arriving in italy in cash if you have any suggestions regarding this um Again, it depends on you, um, but um, have at least 100 euros with you in your pocket, okay? Uh, you would require it maybe for a taxi from the airport to the, to the accommodation where you stay. Uh, but that minimum amount I can recommend, it could go, uh, I mean, again, depends on you. You could carry it through your Forex also. The Forex card works well here for when you're starting off to, to, to take money and come, it's also the safest way to come. So then in case you lose the card, in, um, you can block it instantly. Um, so yeah, okay. it okay. works. Um, okay, I believe we have, do you suggest we, okay, do you suggest we pre-book the taxi on the airport or is it easily available? Depends on the city, where are you? which airport will you be landing at? Yes. And you can um, also use Uber. There's Uber everywhere. You can use so, Uber. Yeah. There is an app for taxi, which is called, uh, um, I'll have to find it on my phone, but I'll tell you. And also consider that, for example, Rome has a train which brings inside the airport, which will bring you directly to, um, the, main city. Uh, to the main city. So uh, the app for taxi, I will write it here in the chat box so that it is always better to book taxis through the app and make sure as in India that they always activate the meter, okay? Um, Fiumicino Airport Rome, what about this? Yes, from Fiumicino there is a train which will bring you for sure to Termini station. From there you can get the metro. Okay, the app for the taxi is called Free Now. Okay, uh, for those, uh, uh, I see that here a student asked about FOD. So uh, I would uh, rather ask uh, the university directly if there is any sort of uh, uh, link uh, um, uh, which connects the main city or transports which connects the main city to the um, uh, to the city where you are staying, where the university is located. Okay. Um, so um, I think that we can proceed. There are certain questions that we haven't answered to because we will 
we will cover them further on. Okay. Canteen. Okay. <laughs> Health insurance. Okay, so I believe that all of you all may already have a health insurance because you all have taken a travel health insurance for your visa. It's valid. Okay, so that's valid here. Um, now, the Italian health insurance works for the solar year, so that's from January to December. Okay, it's called the SSN, that's the public, uh, pub, uh, public health insurance insurance services and it's you pay once okay and you can use it for that entire year uh it costs 140 149 euros okay again payment is made at the local post office when you go to your welcome office this is also something that they would let you know about okay um and with that payment slip then you need to visit the nearest uh, health insurance uh department and they will provide you with everything that you require um, documents that need to be submitted again is your passport copy okay you would require a receipt copy the residence permit receipt copy at this point of time so you can do this after you submit your uh, residence permit kit and then your en enrollment copy and the Kodi Fiscale. okay so you would also require to go to the agency Antrata or the international office and get your Kodi Fiscale by that time okay and uh, it's it's a very beautiful health insurance, I would say, because um, if you ever fall sick, if you're ever in an emergency, you can just call up the ambulance and they're, they're there for you. Thank you, Chiara. Okay. Accommodation. Then, uh, oh, sorry, accommodation. Um, I think Rahul gave a few tips with regards to accommodation and that would be what I would let you know. I mean, the international office will help you, okay? They will provide you with the websites that um, they have connections with, okay? They will also provide you with either accommodations with the hostels. Um, majority of universities do have hostel accommodation. So for the first few months, if you want to take advantage of that, uh, they're beautiful places. Um, you make a lot of friends, international friends as well. Uh, they have gyms, they have endless amount of things. Um, then you also have your regional accommodations and then your private accommodations. Um, there are apps also like Idealista, um, Housing Anywhere, Spot a Home. So many of them are available. Um, one very important thing is go and see the place okay before you ever book a place um, make sure everything is in place uh, the rooms are good the room is clean uh, sockets work if there's a kitchen the appliances in the kitchen works and always sign a lease it's very important okay even as an international student you do receive a lease okay they will put the number of your passport on the lease okay so you don't require a residence permit for it and if it is in Italian, you can always put a translation in Italian before you sign it. Okay, please, please, or take the time to sit and read it, translating using Google Translate, but read the entire lease before you sign anything. Yes. Okay, uh, Chiara, uh, there is Ashwarya who's asking uh, since uh, uh, before. Uh, hmm? I have my accommodation. I have a lease agreement, but it is conditional. The landlady needs fiscal code for registration and for official lease agreement to be made. So I am asked to get fiscal code before I enter my accommodation. Now I was waiting to answer to this question because one of the suggestions that uh, I would like here to um, uh, deliver to you is to uh, make sure to see the apartment and meet the landlord before signing any sort of agreement. Okay, I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart because uh, um you never know who you have on the other side of the of the of the of the screen or i don't know how you got in touch with this uh, with this lady so i understand that it's a necess it is necessary for signing any agreement to have a fiscal code but if the land the lady is not willing to wait for your arrival to italy i would highly consider the fact that uh, um, she's not probably understanding uh, um all the several steps that, that as an international student you will have to undergo. So um, yes, my suggestion is to see the apartment, uh, definitely see the apartment before signing any sort of agreement. 
I don't know, Chiara, if you want to uh, add anything to this. No, I agree with Federica. It's very important. You do not know who's on the other end of the line. Uh, sometimes there's just agents okay, who are who the landlady has paid to get this amount of people, and then it just I'm sorry to say it, it it gets a little difficult then. Okay, so just be very prudent, be very vigilant. Okay, about these things. Okay, it's not a it's not a small thing. Um, see the apartment first, then sign anything. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and since uh, um, Jasmine just asked uh, if we uh, have any suggestion on where to look for an accommodation in the meanwhile, I mean. Uh, as a as a um, temporary, I mean, place uh, uh, until they get uh, a flat uh, and a proper uh, a proper um, lease agreement. I would suggest to have a look uh, and to book only on reliable uh, accommodation providers such as Booking.com and also Airbnb. I know that it can be a little bit expensive, um, but at least we are sure one hundred percent that uh, whoever is in on uh, Booking.com. Uh, uh, has been already, um, how can I say? Um, verified, they're all verified. Exactly. There is also another platform, Housing Anywhere, that we have heard that many students are using. But of course, uh, the most popular um, uh, outsourcers are Booking.com and Airbnb. Okay. Italian language classes. I hope all of you all have at least started learning a little bit of Italian, like where do I go to the bathroom? Can I get a coffee? Okay, so just start off with a little bit. You can even start off with Duolingo. But uh, every university offers free Italian language classes. Um, I believe now that also it's part of credits for every uh, degree. I have it as, an, as a mandatory subject. So it's good. Um, and also you have the local language uh, libraries, you have community centers, they all offer free Italian language classes for international people. So you, you also meet a lot of, make a lot of friends. It's, it's really nice. Um, then supermarkets, um, you'll find a supermarket at every corner. Here we have an example of one called Conad. Um, a suggestion, make a member card because then you get points for shopping and you could always use it um, later on for discounts and things like that. Try the fresh produce. Uh, you have small little local markets where you can also get um, food. Uh, I have lost a lot of weight in Italy. I don't know why I'm eating a lot, but because everything is so fresh and delicious and I mean, it's good for your body. <laughs> so yeah, try the fresh produce. And your canteens will also always give you salad and vegetables and things with your food. So take it. <laughs> then we have something called the ISE, okay? Parificato. Um, this is um, required for either your tuition fee waivers, okay? Or required for your scholarship. And also it is also required for the Erasmus Plus program if that's something that you wish to do. Um, documents for this, this is the family composition for this year, your income certificate according to the year that they ask you for. This differs from region to region. And um, I bet if you ask Unitalia, they will help you prepare everything. So you have no worries about that. Uh, once your documents are ready, you would need to come to Italy with the original documents and submit them at your local CAF. Uh, some universities like uh, Milan, University of Milan, they do it online for you, so you can check that out. Um, and ask your international office, they will help you with that for especially the appointment at the CAF center. You can also do it online. There is a website where you can look at the nearest path to your accommodation and go there. Um, it is free. Okay, please do not pay anybody for an ESA. You, it is free. Okay, if anybody says, oh, I'll get it done for you for 10 euros, please, it is free. Okay, so you just need to take that one step of going to the office and giving them your documents. Um, deadlines, this is as per the scholarship programs or before February. Okay, so if you're not a part or not a part of the scholarship programs, you can get it done before February. 
Um, I added this thing here because I found it very important and I noticed that a lot of students were panicking with regards to it is if you are a scholarship holder, please complete your credits as soon as possible. Okay, because there are deadlines for completing the credits if you are a scholarship holder and exam dates may not coincide with those deadlines. Okay, and remember that professors are very, very strict about the dates. They will not move dates from your there because they also, they take the trouble to do this for you. You have three turns to complete an exam. Some of them have more, but please try finishing it off in the first turn or the second turn if you can and get your credits in hand. Um, and I think I'm done. Perfect. Are there any questions? Now we'll go through the questions. Okay. Um, is embassy legalization mandatory for ESE in Lazio region? Yes, it is. It is. Yes. And uh, in case yeah. you are applying in, in Mumbai, um, I mean, please consider that uh, we as own Italia representatives can uh, uh, guide you in the process. Um, do online payments available? Ev okay, are online payments available everywhere in Italy instead of giving cash as India have UPI uh, payments? Okay, now, um, yes, Chiara, to you. Uh, I use my card on my phone, okay? I can just tap my phone anywhere, it works perfectly. Uh, it's Google Pay or Google Pay or any NF NFC app, okay? So even the, the bank accounts, the bank themselves have an app where you could use their NF NFC uh, cards. So yeah, um, you may need to keep, yeah, it depends on the city also, and you may need to keep some cash with you maybe for like a 10 euros for a coffee and uh, coffee is not 10 euros it's less than that but just in case <laughs> emergency okay. money emergency money always have some cash with you um okay if we want to apply for a scholarship in the second year when we already when we are already in italy then what about the documents do we have to bring the documents now only with us you can apply while you are in Italy and we as Unitalia representatives, we can help you from our offices uh, uh, located in the consulate, uh, Consulate General of Italy in Mumbai. And very soon we will open also in Bangalore and New Delhi. Um, okay, if we have an overseas medical insurance from our home country, do we still require to apply for one in Italy? Uh, no, you don't really need it, but it's always better, okay, because it's the local health insurance here, and sometimes you it takes time for your overseas um to I don't know verify it to activate it. It's something that happens everywhere when you're traveling abroad. Uh, sorry about that, but um, it's always better. Okay, I would really suggest getting it because it also helps you with your residence permit. Okay, and um, I mean, it's not that expensive. I mean, it's just 149 and it's for a full year. And in, it's, it's for an emergency. Technically think about if anything happens to you, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> okay, um, so I think we're done. I'm answering to the Philippe question, Visa ATM works there. I'm answering yes, ATM are available everywhere and Visa cards are accepted. Um, of course, uh, it depends also on your um, uh, banking uh, system in India, Visa cards are accepted. Um, is local Italian insurance, does local Italian insurance cover repatriation clause in case of worst case scenario? Uh, I think the best thing to do is to uh, check with the insurance provider directly because the I don't know if you're talking about uh, the health insurance that uh, Chiara. Um, I think that's what she's talking about. I'm not sure about that, but uh, um, we'll be happy to. I can look over, look it up, and let you know. Okay. 
Um, if there's a, a Ministry of External Affairs apostle, still we need consular attestation in his documents. Yes, you do. Will the recording of this meeting be available? I ended up getting the meeting link a little late. Yes, definitely. Um, the uh, webinar will be saved and available on our YouTube channel. We will send you the link uh, at the end of the session. Uh, what mode of transport would you suggest us say in the evening if we want to travel from airport to, to our respective places, colleges? Uh, I, I, it, it, the, where are you staying? In which city are you staying? Uh, of course, the taxi is the safest place. Um, uh, if okay. you have luggage, yes, the taxi is the best thing to do. Uh, you also have to consider that during the night or early, early morning, public transport might not be uh, functioning. So please check on the uh, relevant apps to see if the, to check the timetable of the uh, public transports, okay? Mm. Moving to Rome for Masters in Business School. How is the public transport connectivity? Is it okay Rome is beautiful. Eight, nine kilometers away. There is one best thing to do. Um, if you check on uh, on maps and Google Maps, you'll be able to verify um, if there are connections, uh, not only, uh, I mean, you're, you'll be able to verify not only the road by car, but also the um, connectivity by public transport from point A to point B. So I've always used Google Maps for this and I can say that it's pretty, um, I mean- connected. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the only thing, of course, in Italy, you will not have uh, Calipili. Uh, yeah. So uh, you have to consider that uh, uh, you will have to, I mean, taxis are quite, quite expensive. Uh, Uber are quite expensive. So the way we as Italian commute in Italy is usually either by a car or public transport. So metro works very well. Um, bus depends on the city. If you live in a small city, um, the, the connectivity, of course, will be better than in big cities, but this is obvious. I mean, so... Okay. So... Um, uh, just a second. Uh, no, actually, uh, yeah, some please of my... write the question in the chat box. We can. I have put that. it uh, four times. Can you please reply to that? Because we were a bit late for the presentation. Can okay, we just okay. get the presentation? Yes. Yeah. yes, I have replied that yes. We, you will all get the presentation. They will be saved on our YouTube channel. So you'll all get the link and you'll be able to rewatch it as many times as you wish. And of course, if you want, if you have any Further doubts, uh, we have offices in India. Uh, we are there to assist you. This is our scope. This is our core business. We are not a consultancy. We are not a private body. We are uh, the official center for promotion of the higher education system in uh, around the world. Our headquarters uh, are in Rome inside the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, we have offices all around the world. And of course, wherever we are, we are always located inside embassies and consulates. Okay, so we are an official body. Whatever information we provide will be provided by Unitalia representatives will be, um, of course, uh, uh, reliable. And uh, that is uh, the only thing that we care about is to be uh, beneficial for the students uh, that are willing to uh, plan a study period in our country, in Italy. So of course, if you need any assistance or if you have any further question uh, related to any of the topics that we have covered today, 
don't hesitate to contact us. We will share our contact details at the end of this presentation. There are several things uh, that I would like to, um, um, uh, several services that we as Own Italia offer. Um, we include in our assistance the guidance in the course sele selection and application in case there are any of you attending this webinar who have not yet applied to an Italian universities and are thinking to do so. So we provide help and assistance in applying to uh, an Italian university. Uh, we guide, we assist in the pre-enrollment application. We assist in the declar declaration of value application, in the legalization of documents for scholarship purpose. And also, and this is a crucial part, uh, we guide the students in the uh, documents preparation for study visa uh, applications, okay? So in case, and of course, we also do translations and other single services. So if you need any sort of assistance or help, uh, which falls under any of these categories just mentioned by me, please, please just contact us. We would be more than happy to guide you. Uh, as mentioned before, we have um, our headquarters in India, in Mumbai, inside the Consulate General of Italy. Uh, we are soon, very soon, uh, uh, in the next month, uh, opening uh, an office inside the Embassy of Italy in New Delhi and inside the Consulate General of Italy in Bangalore. And we will be able, we are, we, we are providing assistance to students all across the country since 2017. Okay, so please do, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. We, uh, this was our first, uh, let's say, tentative uh, uh, webinar. And of course, we decided the topic based on your suggestions. Uh, but if you are interested in other, uh, if you like the concept and you are interested in having uh, prepared by us any other webinar focusing on different topics, uh, please let us know via social media and we'll be happy to organize uh, um, an, uh, an, a second webinar for all of you, okay, in the following month. So uh, thanks again, a special thanks to Chiara Fernandez for being here today, a special thank to the entire team of Unitalia, Jashan, Arka, Ruby, Astra, and Pooja, uh, and of course, a special thanks to all of the students that have attended this webinar, and for those that are planning to go to Italy soon, the best of luck. And I'm sure that Italy will treat you as you deserve to be treated and will be very welcoming. Ciao.